This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome. I decided to start filming this video precisely five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm bringing you guys along my entire finding a film camera for the first time for Lizzie journey. Haven't done this yet because I was intimidated, didn't know where to start, couldn't find any info. No one made a video about it. And I'm doing a little bit of research, reading through a couple articles about which film camera is going to be the best decision for me, learning about what to look for. Guys, I'm starting as a beginner all over again. And here's another factor that's gonna be important to me about picking this camera. I need it to look like a vintage film camera. <sighs> is that superficial? Yes. Do I care? No. So let's find that for us, shall we? I need something that is beginner because I have obviously never shot with film before other than like when I was a child in like the 90s. Finding a place to develop this should be interesting, but Josh Yo. says he knows a place to get film developed downtown, so I'm trusting him to Show me. On this list, there are point and shoots that literally you don't have to do anything. You don't have to manually adjust settings. You can just go boop. There you have a film photo. There are some like that. I want to manually take the photo. I want I want to be in charge of the photo I take, okay? So there are a few different brands. There are a few Nikons. The one I'm looking at, here's a different article, sorry, first that recommends the Canon AE-1, which is the one that Josh has. It's also great. But the two I'm considering based on my very very brief research I've done so far is the Pentax K1000 and the Olympus OM-1. Basically what you're looking for from what I can tell in buying a film camera is the build quality. You want something that is durable and isn't made with plastic. My cat is crying at the door. So the build quality is a factor. I want something that's built well and it sounds like the Pentax and the Olympus are. I'm not looking for something that's too expensive. We're looking for something that's a couple hundred dollars here. Where else would I venture to get this sort of thing other than Kijiji is probably gonna be my first stop and then eBay. A couple of things you're gonna wanna make sure of when you are buying a film camera because you wanna make sure obviously that it works. You're looking for, according to this article I found on gearpatrol.com, looking for a working light meter, shutter, film advance, viewfinder, light seals, and it says though imperfect ones might make for interesting shots, controls, and lens. So those are some of the things you're looking for in the description of the product because you're probably gonna be buying this used you're not really gonna find a new one anymore from what I gather, which makes sense. These are vintage cameras. And you're also gonna need some film, so you're gonna need a place to find some film. What do you want? I will come back to you all when I have some responses, which is hopefully soon. You can go pick it up. We can try it out, do a little trial and error. We will take some photos. We will develop them and see what we've learned. We'll see what camera I end up with. I'm so excited to finally be doing this. I swear to God, it's been like, years I finally wanted to start it and I hope this works out and I don't buy a broken camera. Anyways, see you later. 12 seconds later. We've made an update. First, we're gonna talk about the difference between the Pentax and the one that Josh has, which is the AE-1. First difference we found is the AE-1 has an electronic shutter, whereas the Pentax is a mechanical shutter. Sounds like the mechanical shutter will always work, which is good, so it's more reliable, but the electronic shutter is supposed to be more accurate, but it could fail over time. They also suspect in this article that the batteries the AE-1 takes, the Canon, is a little temperamental. Aperture readout in the viewfinder and an electronic self timer. That's what the Canon has that the Pentax doesn't have. So it sounds like the Pentax is just like uber basic. Maybe I should, hold on. So should I be comparing now this Canon? $260 with the 28 millimeter F2.8 lens. That's cool. I know I'm kind of leaning towards that. Please answer. Okay, we'll let you guys know what happens. It is the next day. We are officially leaving to go pick up my new film camera. Was this slow enough for you? We're officially leaving to pick up the camera. Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Ah. A few inches later. The package has been acquired. Um, the next thing you'll probably see is looking for some film for this guy and figuring out how it works. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. 
I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. Now back to the video. Don't pry it open. Take this, yeah. the lever, pull up, yeah. and then you should pop open. We're in. <laughs> Now, kids, we're going to install some film. So Josh picked up two different kinds of film. One is Portrait 400 and one is the Fuji, Fuji film. Yep. So we put this doohickey, it actually slides in fairly easily. So we are we have to pull this and feed it through here. But let's lock that thing. Somehow. First. Oh, I have to pull this down? Yeah. Okay, push that back down. And you're gonna grab this dude. And you're gonna pull it and try not to cry. And then I pull this gently and hold this with my thumb. Oh my God, I did it. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Now we should just be able to close this little thing up and then we're gonna watch. Okay, so it is on S. Okay. As you can see, and we need to make that set at one. So we basically have to take imaginary pictures until it moves to one, which I think should be that. Is it a number or is it a dot? Sometimes it's a dot, depends on the camera. Okay, we're gonna find out. So I'll take a picture again. Oh shit. Our last fake photo. Now we're gonna lock it so we don't ruin all the hard work we've just done. It's ready. So now we just have to set the ISO to 400 to match the film. And on this camera, you just hold down this little button and you can move it around, which is pretty intuitive actually. And it snaps into place and then now it's locked there and it can't be moved. Then we would just set the shutter, focus and aperture. And hypothetically, we should be able to take a photo. There's a giant fingerprint on the lens. Is that actually? See. Yeah, it's like a big old greasy. So we're about to burn through two rolls of film strictly for test purposes. We're going to use the Fuji first to, you know, get a little warmed up. So if we make any mistakes, at least it's not the more expensive roll of film. And then we'll switch to this one. Don't judge our photography skills for this. We'll do our best, but really this is just for science. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Holding company now. Okay, just look deadpan at me. One. Welcome to our first shoot with the camera. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on me right now, but we're going to give it a go. Here we go. This is, this is our new friend, Marissa. Hi. She literally showed up. We called her an hour ago and asked if she could come because we had no one to take pictures of. We can show those stories now, actually, me being really desperate on Instagram. Being like, if anyone can come, please come. Do you live in Toronto? Do you have a car? DM me. We have to go take some test photos for a video and we realized we probably need a model well, like, you don't actually have to be a model. We just need someone to take photos of in the next half hour to an hour. Um, okay, here we go. That's a great question. Which tire? Exactly like that. If you want, you can rest your head. Like, Let me take 12 years to get focus on you to make sure it's perfect because I only have one chance to do this. Okay, so here we are. I'm exposing, I've been told to change my aperture to f11 by the camera, so I'm gonna do that. My shutter, I'm just keeping at 1000 right now. I could probably drop it, but I don't really want to because it's really bright. If you don't have a light meter, which we do have in this particular camera, but if you don't, you could apply all of the Sunny 16 principles to your photography. We will have a chart that comes up now that explains roughly the numbers to keep in your back pocket for your shutter speed and your f-stop to make sure you are always exposed correctly. But if you have a light meter, probably okay. Let's find another weird scenario. That uh, garbage bag is real. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, no, just walk, just look at your feet or straight ahead. Okay. Fuck off, flies. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's neat. That looks great. Let me see how I'm metering. 
eight years later. Oh, I didn't want to get it. Okay. Yeah, I like the one hand in the pocket, that's sweet. What we're trying to do right now is work with the harsh sunlight we have and with some of the shadows because on film, sorry I can't see you guys but now I can, on film there's a lot of dynamic range so something that wouldn't necessarily look as good on like my Sony a7R4 because the shadows would be super super dark and the highlights would either be exposed or super bright, it would just look like too much contrast. On film everything evens out a lot more so it can make those harsher photos look a lot more smoother because of the dynamic range. A lot more smoother, a lot more smooth. That's film for you, it just evens everything out. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. It's dutty in there. It smells really gross. And actually look past me like to your left, like, yeah. It's mostly I'm trying to frame it. Okay, now you're good, go for it. Cool. What we're noticing is I'm slower at taking photos. So on the downside, I have to try a couple times to get the movement I want, wait for the perfect moment, and really be intentional with what I'm shooting. But that is the bonus, I'm being intentional with what I'm shooting. I'm not just firing off thousands of photos. So I could miss the moment, but also I'm really putting in the effort to compose my shot, which is kind of nice. Um, so it's a different it's a different way of shooting, which is, is it's really fun and not knowing what the photo looks like before I develop it. And I'm also looking at this entire area, which normally I would think looks really freaking disgusting, like this pile of finished uh, fire extinguishers behind me. But on film, everything looks better. So this might be a really cool <laughs> shot. So we're gonna give it a try. If you sat right around here, just like in a comfy way. That's great, hold that. Actually, looking up a little bit, I actually like what you, can you put that to hair back? And then just with your eyes, look up ahead of you. Look back. And then like spin around and like look off to the side and then and spin. We can do one more. So one, two, three. That was actually cool, right, what you, what you did. So I was like, yep, that's it, thank you. Welcome back to my home. Wasn't that a great shoot? Didn't we take some beautiful film photos? Genuinely, I'm actually quite impressed by a few of them. I did screw up the focus on a couple, but we're gonna we're gonna move past it. It's fine. Everybody makes a few mistakes. But on that note, a couple things that I wanted to remind you guys, a few things we learned along the way that we didn't talk about at the beginning of this video. One, pay attention to your minimum focus distance. As you can see, a few of my photos, we can put them up now, we're out of focus, and I believe that that's why. So I was shooting a few more photos yesterday Day, which was the day after this shoot and that was something I tried to keep in mind and I will keep in mind going forward. Another thing, two more things actually when selecting your film. One, pay attention to the color on the box. Oh, and by color on the box I don't mean the purple, I mean this yellow. So for Portra 400 film, it's going to have a bit of a warmer tone tint to the highlights. When you're shooting or choosing a Fuji film, do we have an example? Thank you, Dobby. When choosing Fujifilm, as you can see, it's green. And the Fujifilm is going to have a bit of a green tint or hue to the highlights. And that's something you'll notice in the photo examples we took because all of our photos were taken on Fujifilm. 400 though, not 200. Oh, another thing, you'll wanna pay attention. Okay, so here is the significance of the 200 or the 400 or the 800 film. This is essentially the ASA, otherwise known as ISO, you will want to set on your film camera. It must match this film. We did say that earlier on, but here, here's the other trick. As you know with your camera, your DSLR or whatever you have, you'll want to raise your ISO as it gets darker. Therefore, you'll want to use a film with a higher speed, so like 800, 
for example, if you're shooting in lower light, so like at night, for example. 400 is usually a great middle ground, which is why Portra 400 film is so popular. 200 would probably be better for a really sunny day. As you'll also notice in some of my photo examples, there were a few that were a little bit overexposed. That may have been corrected, probably would have been corrected if I'd chosen a 200 film speed. 200 film speed. I'm learning all the lingo, okay? You learned this along with me. That is officially all of the knowledge I've gathered for you guys in selecting a film camera. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope our process was entertaining for you. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a like down below. Subscribe if you're not ready and hit the notification. If you're not ready, <laughs> If you're not already, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified for all future videos. It really helps support this channel and keeps us making videos that are interesting and educational and fun for you guys to watch. And I'll see you in the next one. If you're not ready. <laughs> I got that. I was like, something sounded wrong there.